Thank you for downloading the latest podcast from the Canada-Europe Transatlantic Dialogue housed at Carleton University in Ottawa. The interviewees were in conversation with Anka Gurzu. For terms of use, please refer to the publication section of our website, www.canada-europe-dialogue.ca. Hello, my name is Miranda Schurz, and I direct the Environmental Policy Research Center at the Free University of Berlin in Germany. On a large scale, how would you describe Canada and the European Union in terms of their environmental goals, their results so far, and where they are heading? It's, of course, really hard to compare the two countries um, on all factors, but if you look at Canada and the EU, in some ways they're both uh, sustainability leaders with a lot of focus on nature protection and sustainable development is an idea that I think uh, resonates in both places. But if we look at uh, what's going on in the areas of climate change, energy, there we start to see some big differences with Canada pulling out of the Kyoto Protocol and having a much weaker greenhouse gas emission target than we have in the European Union. If all goes well, if the EU continues on this road, one of its goals would be to reach an 80 to 95 percent emission reduction target by 2050 compared to 1990 levels. And to quote you based on a previous statement you have made, that would be an energy revolution. Is this goal realistic? Are there the policies in place to make this achievable? It is a really ambitious goal, and when I say it's an energy revolution, it is, because it's basically saying we need to largely move away from reliance on fossil fuels and to switch into a super highly efficient economy that takes much greater advantage of natural renewable electricities. And in order to do that, it means transforming the way we do it, the kinds of jobs we have, industrial sectors. So you're absolutely right that the challenge is huge, but if you don't have a vision and if you don't have a target to where you want to move, then you're probably not going to get very ambitious change. So whether or not Europe will actually get to 80 to 95 percent reductions by 2050, that still needs to be seen. But having that kind of target, plus medium-term targets in between, that means you push yourself forward, and that's what I think Europe's trying to do right now. I know that both Canada and the European Union share similarities in terms of their governance structure, and I know you've been interested in finding a model to compare the two in terms of their resource availability and resource use as well. Could you speak about some of your ideas, your findings? Yeah, well, if you do compare Canada and the EU at the federal level or the supranational level, then what you see are some striking differences with Europe performing across somewhat better than Canada. But if we break Canada and the EU up and we look at Canada by province and the EU by member state, then we can see some areas where, gosh, there really are some provinces in Canada that are doing a lot, and there's some states in the EU that aren't doing so much. So we could, for example, compare on the less advanced side, maybe Alberta, which has problems because of the fossil fuel base and therefore very high per capita CO2 emissions, and Poland, which relies so heavily on coal and therefore also has very high greenhouse gas emissions. On the other hand, you have a province like Quebec, where you have very heavy reliance on hydropower, and so you have very clean electricity. You also have some nuclear power plants. And the same would be true in Sweden, where um, electricity is considered very clean because it's primarily from hydro with a little bit of nuclear. So far we've been speaking about the policy level, but there's also the public. And while there is a strong movement among the public in favor of changing environmental policies, in favor of renewable energy, there are also health concerns among some sectors of the public about some of these new emerging technologies. How important is it to have public acceptance as this transition happens? And what are really the concerns here? Public acceptance is so critical. You can't do an energy revolution if the public doesn't accept it. You can't transform your economy if the public isn't on board. And the single best thing you can do to get that public acceptance is to include the public in the decision-making process, and not just on the side kind of thing, but really to introduce their ideas and thoughts into the critical planning stage of policy change, and also to give a chance for people to react to past decisions and find ways to improve them. Thank you. Thank you very much.